Broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios, I am your host, Mike Wilson, and you're listening to In the House. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, In the House is a podcast about the major systems in the house. Electrical, plumbing, heating, air conditioning. Each week I'm joined by a panel of experts. We pick a topic and we discuss it in depth. It's meant to be informative and hopefully bring you some value. On this episode, we're gonna be talking about toilets, how they work, common issues, what you should and shouldn't flush and why, how they work, how to, I already said how to work, (laughs) how to fix them uh, and why Sometimes you have to jiggle the handle to get it to stop running. Today, I'm joined by the management team of the plumbing department at Any Hour Services, Ricky, Dwayne, Scott. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Glad to be here, Mike. Hey, nice to be here. Good. So let's let's dive right in. Um, let's just talk about how toilets work. Anyone? <laughs> <sighs> the sound of silence. Hey, Mike, you're not going to give us the test as you did last month? <clears throat> On when the first water heater was invented, I believe you. Were well, that one didn't go that well. well and so, <laughs> so I did the, you did the research. <laughs> I did. Okay. So uh, let's actually start with this question. Uh, I didn't tell you I was going to ask, but does anyone know when the toilet was invented? <clears throat> 1596. <laughs> uh, it was invented by Sir John Harrington, uh, the grandson of Queen Elizabeth. That's right. Um, I actually did look that up and ah, I was, and then I had flashbacks of like asking when a water heater was invented. And I was like, (laughs) I think we'll just dive right into talking about toilets, but yeah, toilets have been around for a long time. Right. And you know, I, when I think of, you know, toilets, I, in my head, I'm, I'm imagining the evolution, uh, you know, just, you know, going to the bathroom outside. Then we're all of a sudden like, Oh, well let's, let's cover the things that we're doing. Oh, maybe we should dig a hole. Well, let's build a box around that hole, call it an outhouse. And you know, all of that, uh, evolution. And the thing is, is like indoor plumbing. When I was thinking about it, I honestly think that the flushing toilet that like carries the waste away from the home, like our plumbing system nowadays has got to be like one of the greatest inventions uh, or innovations that really contribute to the health and well-being and the comfort of of our country. You know, you think about one of the major differences with third world countries and, and ours is they don't have clean water. They don't have places. I mean, they're they're literally going to the bathroom next to where their water supply is. And it's it's not a good situation. So I feel super lucky that, uh, you know, that we live in a in a place and a time where that's not necessarily an issue. And it just keeps getting better and better, just like as time goes on, everything is improved upon and our codes to protect everybody is is really important. For sure. And plumbing. So, okay, so today we're gonna be talking about toilets. So let's, let's just talk about the basics of how a toilet works. I think most people think, okay, I, I've got the toilet, I flush it and the stuff goes away as long as it's not clogged. <laughs> but if it's working properly, how does the toilet work? Because you don't need power for it, right? No electricity. All it's right. all done mechanically. Yeah. So the, um, you know, most toilets have a tank. Okay. And uh, some places you go, you see the tank way, way, way high on the wall and they've got the chrome pipe coming down and things. But so it's a gravity, a gravity fed system where the water is stored and then that water opens up when you push the handle and uh, it goes down and creates a swirl around the bowl and then swishes things out and runs it on down the drain. So that's your basic basic operation of that. There is a, uh, uh, most people don't know, but we talk about traps all the time, and there is a trap on a toilet, and if you ever get beside of a, t- look at the side of a toilet, you'll see an S-shaped thing, and so the water level that you see in the bowl is also in that trap that keeps sewer gases and things from coming back up. You know, yeah, on some previous episodes, you guys may have remember us talking about pee traps and, and different things like that. And, you know, so when Dwayne says traps, yeah, that, that's that's the type of thing that he's talking about. And the toilet has has that trap built right into it. So um, let's talk about the different styles of of toilets. Um, people may not even realize that there are different styles. So when it comes to residential applications, what are the different kinds of toilets that are available for people? Well, I think <clears throat> there's there's several different um, features. And get get right up on that mic there. 
there's a lot of different features and differences in the toilets. First of all, they, they come in a round bowl style. Um, they also come in an, elo an elongated style. They also have different heights. So um, for comfort height, you can, you know, if you're a little taller, they make them a little taller. A couple inches taller makes a, a huge difference as well. So why do they... Um why do they have those different styles? Is there any function to them or is it really just for comfort? It really is just for comfort. The way that they're designed and, and flush is, is typically the same in each, in each toilet. So yeah, it's more for, for comfort and accessibility. You know, some bathrooms are a little bit smaller, you know, your door might be really close to your toilet. And so an elongated toilet wouldn't work in that, in your bathroom. But, um, you know, if you have more space and you know, like the, the longer style and you're taller, you can get the comfort height. So, yeah. So anyone out there that has a plumber that comes out to replace their toilet, if, just know that there are options available and uh, those different options. You should ask your plumber about those. Uh, I, you know, it's interesting. I think about the the height issue, you know, for some people, it may be a, it's not as comfortable getting up and down, like having to bend down as far to get on and off of the toilet, you know, whether you got, you know, bad knees or whatever, that extra height does, does help. But then I also, you know, being on social media and stuff and a couple of years ago when, uh, when the squatty potty came out, <laughs> I remember those commercials. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the whole thing is like, you know, in in some countries, it, it still is a hole in the ground and you squat over it because they're saying that the ergonomics and the way that your body functions is that it's good to have things in alignment. And you get that by by being in more of a squatted position. And so, you know, those those squatty potties um, kind of. So, so I guess in my mind, I'm thinking like, oh, we created these uh, comfort height toilets, but it makes it uh, makes it. So now you got to have a squatty potty. <laughs> Any, any experience with you guys? Do you, do you guys come across a lot of squatty potties out there in, uh, in the world? I haven't, I, there's a lot of talk about them, but I haven't personally seen them or used one myself. No. Hmm. Yeah. I've, I've seen them there in some houses that I've gone into. So, well, they, Ricky, I love my comfort height. Yeah. Well, you could still have a comfort height toilet and then you just put your feet up on the squatty potty and it changes your posture. I like sitting on my comfort height no yeah. i here's the thing squatty potty is not a uh, a sponsor of the show if you'd like to be reach out to me mike dot wilson <laughs> at any hour services uh but i love my squatty potty <laughs> i have one i and once i once i got one uh i got one for the other bathrooms in the house because you never know where you're going to be going to the bathroom yeah, let's we're getting close to a line there mike personal I have not described any of my personal <laughs> habits. Anyway. For, uh, for, for me, one thing is, I mean, personally, I'm a very big guy, uh -huh. and I think that round bowls ought to be outlawed. Really? Why I is just, that? I, I just don't fit on them. I'm a big guy. And the elongated is, is, for me, so much better. Gotcha. And things. And so. I, I personally, I like the elongated as well, and I, I, don't, mind the, I don't mind the comfort height, but... Uh, understanding the ergonomics of things some people care about that some people don't but anyway so yeah different different styles of toilets those innovations mainly for comfort uh let's talk about some common issues uh with toilets there's going to be i think the probably the most common issue from a homeowner's perspective or they they when they think of a toilet and it not working is a clog probably um, but we know f as being technicians that there's a lot of other things that that can happen uh, to a toilet to a toilet that causes it not to uh, function properly so let's take the first one the most common uh, with clogs and from from your experience as a plumber why why do uh, toilets clog well I think it's important to understand that this the size of where things have to go through. I mean, you're not dealing with a huge area to go through. So if you're using a lot of toilet paper um, and things like that, it, it could definitely cause problems because it's got to go up and over. Dwayne talked about the P-trap. It's got to climb a hill and then go up and over and down. If you have a, you know, a lot of toilet paper, then that can definitely clog. If, if you're the type of person that likes to use a lot of toilet paper or you feel like you're using a lot of toilet paper, maybe, maybe give a courtesy flush, like to help get some of that Absolutely, down yeah. before you continue. Um, what, 
um, you talked about the size of the opening and we talked about different styles, but there are um, different sizes of openings, is there not? Yes, in fact, they, they've they also um, come a long way how they make them. Nowadays, they're glazing the inside, so it's a lot smoother surface for things to go through. Back in the olden days, it was just raw porcelain, so things could snag a lot easier. And, and Scott, that is, I mean, some toilets still are not glazed and things. The cheaper, the cheaper toilets that you buy and some of the all-in-a-box ones, that's the one of the reasons they're cheaper is because they don't have that glazed trapway. And so if you take what your toilet is, that's glazed on the lid. If you turn the lid over and rub your fingers on that, that's unglazed porcelain. And it's a lot rougher like sandpaper. And so things can tend to, instead of sliding and slipping down and up and over that P-trap and down the drain, they can get hung up a lot more. And that is a real... It is a real issue on level and quality of toilets. And that's something that I think a lot of people don't realize as well is that um, part of even with like a main line or things like that is that clogs don't, it's not usually like a big all at once thing. Like it can get hung up on, on stuff. And then all of a sudden you get something that hangs up and then you, another thing that goes down the drain, it gets hung up. And then the next thing, and then all of a sudden it builds up until a normal thing that you would try and flush gets stuck behind that uh, blockage and it's not uh, going anywhere. So uh, we, we were talking to about there are different sizes. It's yes. called the trapway. It's what they call it on the toilet. And there are different sizes of the trapway. What um, are those sizes? They're two inch. In fact, there is some that are are less than two inches. Are those older ones or are those less expensive? The less expensive to? ones are that way is that usually printed on the box if someone's going to like get a toilet does it talk about the the size of the trap way some of them some of them will most of them will advertise a three inch trap way okay so you will see that you'll see the three inch and so there's the two inch which they call the tennis ball size and then there's the three inch which is a lot larger okay trap way and so are are you is it recommended that if you have the opportunity to install a toilet that the, the larger the trap way, the better or not really? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. You will not have near as many plugs on, on that larger trap way. I've noticed also, um, with it in my experience, replacing toilet flappers in little how to videos and things like that, uh, that, that the opening there can be from the, from the tank, to the bowl going down, you know, sending the water, that can be different sizes as well. Does that make a difference? Um, oh, well, yeah, definitely because of the volume of water that goes down. So the, the three inch trapway toilets, we have two inch flappers and three inch flappers out there. And so that volume of water can dump so much quicker to get everything swirling and flushing and moving down the drain as quick as it can on that flushing it down the line gotcha yeah i and we talked about that your toilet it doesn't require power to work um one thing that i think about sometimes if i, I don't know when i've been in this situation or why but or how i've figured it out but if you if you think about that tank rushing the water down into the bowl maybe some of you have done this i don't know if i was just curious as a child but like take a bucket of water and don't pour it in the tank pour it if, if you pour it into the bowl with enough force that creates the momentum that all of a sudden will flush the toilet um but i mean if you don't have the water running to like fill the bowl back up you gotta like do that but um anyway what what would be some some things that would cause that to to need to be done the um so the water levels in the tank are real critical mm -hmm. in there most the tanks will have a mark on there that says water line um in there and that water needs to be adjusted to be at that height. If you're lower than that, if uh, somebody comes and works on the toilet and they don't set it to the right height, you won't get the volume of water you need. That's a, it's, a, it's a really designed thing in place. Back in the olden days, we used to have the five gallon flush toilets. Um, and then uh, they started mandating in the 70s, they mandated the 3.5 gallon flushes. And so a lot of us grew up with our parents putting bricks in the toilet tanks which to save water which kept the level still at the same height but displaced less water but you do need that volume of water right now we're 1.6 gallon flushes in the um, 
in the early 90s, the government came out with another mandate and uh, did the 1.6 gallon flushes. And it took the company manufacturers a few years to retool. Basically, they just, when they first came out, they just kind of did the, the thing of putting some bricks in the thing by putting styrofoam inside or different things, creating less water, but they didn't flush. And everybody was very frustrated that they had to flush twice. And since 2000, manufacturers have really been doing a great job. And I mean, we've got 0.75 gallon flush out toilets out there now. 1.28 is becoming a, a good standard. So is it more about having the water level at a certain height to like make the flush happen and that's how you're able to do it with less water or how, how are they making that do work? Yeah, there's, you know, it's all design. It's all design and engineering. And so some, some takes are making taller and skinnier to increase the height of the water. So you've got that head pressure. But, but so yeah, there's a little bit more head pressure, but still a small volume of water that goes down. But the the jet action and the little holes that are in there and, and everything, they all come into play. And you can't, you can't take a du another tank and put on, say your tank breaks, you can't just go grab a tank and put on and expect it to work because those two pieces They're designed are engineered to together. together. That makes sense. They're also designed as the water goes down, as it goes through that trapway, not only is the water pushing it, but once it gets over the trapway, it begins to pull it. I think they call it a venturi effect mm -hmm. um, but that's very crucial in the function of a toilet and um, if, if the right amount of water isn't getting in the bowl at the right velocity it won't cause it to pull it through and those things have to work together in order to get a, a proper flush and not get uh, backups and plugs in your toilet so let's let's go ahead and, and one thing on that that part of that whole tank thing and everything too a lot of times we retrofit our toilet and we've got maybe a 20 year old toilet and the flapper's been changed two or three times, and we just go get a normal flapper and put in. The flapper also has to close inside just at the right time and come down. If it closes too early and falls too quickly, then we don't get the volume of water going down and we don't get a proper flush. If it stays open too long, it will do what we call a double flush, where the tank the tanks never empty all the way. They're not supposed to empty all the way. They, they have that gravity feed and then they fill back up to their level. But if it double flushes, there's enough water in there and you'll see it flush down twice. And so there's a kind of a perfect timing part on that where just as the flapper closes, I always call it just as the flapper closes, you wanna hear that down the toilet. Mm -hmm. So you bring up a good, uh, uh, a point and a situation that I've experienced as far as that flapper closing at just the right time. And if it closes too soon, you don't get a full flush. I think all of us m probably have experienced being in a home where just a regular flush doesn't work. You actually have to hold the handle until you get like a full flush. If any, is that normal? I, I mean, not normal. I know normal doesn't necessarily mean that it's working properly, but like, is that a common thing? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the chain length and how 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 close you are. Sometimes you try to push the lever down and there's not enough chain pull, to fully to pull open it, it open it. Mm. But as the water level goes down and you hold it down, then it is able to come on up and open mm. and things on uh, back on the flappers and things when so like some of the old American standard toilets and stuff from the 2000s and uh, probably up till 2010. They had a little styrofoam float on them. Yep. And so they've been replaced with the flapper, but that styrofoam float helped the flapper lower down as the water level lowered down. But when you take that out and just put a regular flapper in, then you might end up with issues with it closing too soon too, or staying open too long. And they make what they call adjustable flappers. And uh, on those packages, it'll tell you what brand hmm. And that kind of a thing and you can adjust that so that so that your flapper is falling there again just at that perfect swirl as the toilet vacates uh, let's talk about other issues with uh, with the toilet so if a what could be the problem if a toilet loses its flush meaning like when you flush it and you hear it like it just doesn't seem to have the pressure, but the, I mean, the tank has water in it. What, what could be causing that as an issue? Um, 
one of the main causes, depending on the age of the toilet, if you're working with an older toilet, you have an older toilet in your home. We've said this before, but we have very um, hard water here um, along the Wasatch Front. And so um, the water content and the minerals in the water can cause those pores to plug off. And we talked about the importance of that water distribution. If those pores are plugged off due to hard water, um, it won't flush properly. And unfortunately, this isn't like a, an easy clean. It's not an area of the toilet that you can get to. It's the inner workings of the of the bowl, and you can't get to that to clean it from outside. So yeah. let me go ahead. You know, on on that, I, most people just think, well, I keep my toilet bowl really clean. What they don't understand is that water level. The water has a second jacket on the outside that the water flows down through, and so there's stab standing water in that jacket that you can't see. Let's try and explain jacket. Uh, there's a couple things that we're talking about here, and I want for those that, well, one, we don't have a toilet in front of us, and for those listening, let's try and explain. Uh, we're going to explain the the jets or the little openings the, that you're talking about, and we're going to explain jacket. So when we talked about how a toilet works, let me let me go back here first. Do all toilets have those jets or some type of opening or whatever you call them, pores or? Yes, they all have that, and they, they're, they're designed to make the swirling action. So when you flush your toilet, you'll see water running down from the top of the toilet bowl, and you'll see it going in a circle. Those are the pores we're talking about. So the water that you see running down the sides of the toilet that all come to the bottom of the bowl, those are coming out of little openings along the rim. So the rim is, is thick, right, and it, goes, it forms that that rim of the bowl underneath there there are little openings and there's water coming out and it's designed to go in a certain direction that's act is that where you get the uh the swirl that everybody's like oh it swirls a different direction in in, in the other hemisphere <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely the direction of those pores it's not the, it's not the, not the rotation of the, of the earth we're on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and some of them i mean i've seen some toilets that they don't actually swirl and, and I mean, I'm assuming it's the design of it where it, it all just kind of goes down into the bottom of it. But so that water is uh, so that's those jets or pores that you're talking about that can clog up with hard water. And so and then you talked about, uh, Dwayne, you talked about a jacket of water around. Explain that to me because I, I was I don't know about this. Yeah. So you'll see that some toilets have a hole that goes towards the front way down in the bottom. Yes, I've seen that. Okay. okay. So there, there's water that's stored in there as well, and that part of that whole flushing action, as it comes out of the tank, it comes out of those jets around the rim, but also water hits that jacket. Okay. It, it hits that void in there and then pushes water through the hole, which then starts to drive things down the line. So is that is the water always there like there's always water in the tank? It is. OK, it is. And so that's what I was saying. Sometimes we see, well, I keep my toilet really clean. OK, but there gets to be hard water buildup at that toilet bowl level on the inside, which can affect how that little hole in the jet, you know, it's called a little jet venturi there that that pushes the stuff down the drain. Gotcha. So if you've got really hard water and you don't have a, a softener, that could be causing the issues with your toilet not flushing properly. Correct. Okay. Um, what about, uh, we talked about the, we were talking about the flapper all, earlier and I, and I teased that we would talk about jiggling the handle. Um, let's talk about that as an issue because growing up, I, we always had to jiggle the handle. I wasn't a, as a kid, I didn't know anything about plumbing or how flappers worked or things like that. I just knew that I had to keep putting the chain back on when you go to use it and it, it won't, the handle like has no resistance. You go and you put the chain back on by taking the lid off. But let's talk about, um, let's talk about the flapper or more. Let's talk about the issue of people's toilets running constantly. What's causing that? Yeah, no, if a toilet's constantly running and losing water, we're getting water outside of the tank and we talked about earlier a flapper that is basically the only way for water to get from the upper part of the tank down into the bowl so sometime over time that that rubber will actually um, make a little void in it or not sealing properly and you'll get some water seeping through once it hits a certain level it's going to flush or it's going to fill back up the tank and so it's it's almost like it's flushing 
um, all over again. You, you, that's that two o'clock in the morning. Dang it, my toilet's filling back up right. again thing that you have to deal with that people hate. And it's, it's sometimes just a very minute leak or something where that flapper attaches it's rubber it can it can get soft and squishy and and uh, you know it can bend and tweak and things like that even hard water can affect it's no longer soft and it becomes very hard and rigid and it just doesn't seal quite right so when you hear that in the morning you know if, if it's if it's if you hear the tank filling back up that's not a normal thing and we should you know it can be taken care of with a, usually just a new flapper gotcha um so flapper I, there's also a fill valve that could be, uh, an issue, right? So talk to me about what the fill valve is and what could be going on with that. So the fill valve is, the, um, how we get the water into the tank. So, mm -hmm. um, basically the water coming from our pipes come up through the tank and there's a device on the inside. If you look on the inside of your tank, it's a tall tower. And what it does is it's designed to put enough water in the tank so that, so that we have that you know, action working properly. You know, if that adjustment's not right, you'll also see in the middle of your tank, there's a little a, a tall to a tall open tube. Mm -hmm. um, if that if that fill valve is running water too high, water's just going to spill over and it's just going to run through the bowl. So it will constantly be running. Gotcha. So uh, so, yeah. So the most common things are a bad flapper or bad fill valve. Um, are there, is there anything else that could be wrong that would be causing the water to leak from the tank to the bowl and uh, cause it to periodically turn on and refill? I just uh, replaced uh, four toilets in my home this past weekend. And I, on, on a number, first thing on the flappers, there's different sizes and universals and things like that. And some people will go out to their local plumbing supply and, and grab a flapper and stick it in their toilet. And it's really not the right flapper uh, for that application. And then you can get the water seeping down into the bowl and then it'll run at the, you know, whenever that bowl drops to a, a certain point or the tank. And you can also take your finger and uh, pull the flapper up and take your finger and clean the outside of that flapper because it does get debris on it and stops it from having that good seal. Um, I've, I've went into homes before and just not even had to do anything for a customer and, and be able to help them to know a couple, maintain a couple things throughout the, their toilet to keep it uh, running properly. Yet also back uh, on the uh, fill valve, uh, bef my house is 12 years old and I, I have not been in it the full 12 years and there was no softener system in throughout the home. And when I pulled all the, uh, all the toilets out, I could see that uh, they weren't glazed well and they were hard to clean anymore at the water line because of the hard water had built up a, 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 a hard water build up calcium in that area. And my wife would say, I can't get it to clean no matter what I do. And it's from sitting for years and years. Um, so now I have a softener system in my home, obviously, and installed the new toilets. But also when I pulled the toilets, uh, one of them was actually an offset toilet at one point or another. And the three inch sewer line uh, fifty percent of it had been uh, where it started catching here and there over the years, and then built up and built up. I only had about fifty percent of flow out of that toilet um, from over a period of time of having build up as well. So hard water, calcium deposits, proper flappers, making sure those are clean, and again the fill valves, making sure that that float is at the right level to get the maximum water in the tank. And back again to the rim that we talked about, that rim around the toilet's hollow, like a tube. And when that water goes around and hits those ports, um, that hot, hard water had clogged some of those ports on my toilets as well. So they were all ready for replacement. So that's a lot of the main maintenance things that you can look at and, and do. Does that tube that the flapper rests on, that, that where all the water goes through, does that ever crack? And could that be... A situation where some water could be emptying the tank siphoning down into the bowl and then causing the thing to run yeah it can it can it can crack it is it's just a plastic piece so that that is possible but it is just sitting there so maybe if it was installed over tightened or something like that it could it could crack and and go through there another another reason why um, things go wrong inside the toilet is a lot of people choose to put um, 
bleach tablets and you know the nice blue blue water and things like that and as awesome as those sound and cleaning the bowl and and keeping that sanitary they're not super awesome on the parts inside okay absolutely chlorine the chlorine really affects all the rubber parts in there and so the bolts there's bolts that hold the tank down that have a rubber rubber washer, washer in there. yep where the flapper rests on that on that overfill tube part um, there's a rubber gasket underneath there and you know rubber over time i mean how often do we have to change our windshield wipers and things you know so rubber over time just gets hard and brittle and and doesn't respond so i mean it's not like they're 30 year items kind of thing anytime you've got rubber involved it's what about the what about the bowl cleaners that um, hook over the side of the bowl that aren't uh, inside the tank are those better much better option yeah because it's not sitting in the water all the time making that water content you know full of bleach it's actually only doing it as it's coming through so yeah a much better solution gotcha uh, okay so another uh, common issue is when you get that gurgle at the bottom of the flush what and when I say gurgle I mean you know the noise but but it seems like it's a problem because it doesn't like fill back up quickly. What, what could be causing, do you, do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's like you, you flush it and it's like, very good, Mike. <laughs> it doesn't usually go that long, <laughs> but, but if you explain that sound to me, I would probably say, I think we might need to check the vent. Okay. The toilet. It does need to, it does need to be properly vented. And sometimes when toilets are slow and sluggish like that, and don't have that right swirl, and you know that it's not calcium buildup or other things like that, could be the vent. Maybe a bird has built a nest up on the roof inside the vent, or there's a beehive up there that's blocking the airflow that it needs to be able to siphon that trap out. Okay. Okay. Because I've, I've noticed on some toilets that it'll happen sometimes, but not all the time. And so I, I've always wondered, but that makes sense as far as like a vent might be an issue. Anything else you guys can think of that, that, that might be causing that? Just to clarify, if anybody's wondering, where is the vent on my toilet? Yes, where's That's, the vent on your that toilet? Is not, he's, it's not what he's referring to. It's not on your toilet. Okay. It's in your plumbing system. They're the pipes Behind that the go walls. out your... Yeah, you won't see those. They're actually pipes that go up and out the roof. So, yeah, I don't want somebody sitting there looking for the vent <laughs> on the toilet. <laughs> where's my, where's, my, plumb, where's, where's my toilet vent? <laughs> okay, sounds Thanks, good. Scott, good job. <laughs> um, and then the last one that I've, that I've noticed over the years is you flush and then there's just not a whole lot of water left in the bottom of the bowl. And it seems like sometimes the water's up at the regular level, but then after you flush, sometimes it's feel, it seems like it's down really, really low. What causes that inconsistent refilling of the toilet? Is that a sign of an issue or what is it? Could be things hanging up, sometimes a large load will hang up a little bit and um and then <laughs> what hang on i just want to make sure that like uh we're that i'm understanding what you're talking about because we're talking about the toilet and you're saying a large, large load, load will get hung up are you talking about the load i think you're talking about yes I oh, okay okay i just want to make sure just, i just, just <laughs> thank you Dwayne. You have to go there when you're talking about toilets. I totally understand, but you said that talking about a squatty potty cross the line, and then you talk about large loads, (laughs) and like I just okay, sorry, keep going. Good point, Mike. All right. Well, there's there's videos out there that I don't want to see a video of that. I don't want to see it. I just I mean the description was enough. I just want to make sure that I understood. So sometimes the large load plugs up. (laughs) the opening slightly for a little bit and as the water fills and fills and fills and you're thinking oh my gosh it's gonna overflow then all of a sudden it goes down well now the toilet's already done its cycle to fill it back up and it won't fill it back up all the way because the flapper's already closed and it's doing its thing but the water went down this can also be something that's in the line after the toilet that kind of does the same thing where something gets hung up the large load (laughs) <laughs> wow <laughs> on this episode of in the house we're going to talk about toilets and large loads <laughs> anyway but something get, get get hung up in the piping itself and sure. then as the load goes down it hangs hangs up there and then creates that siphon again and drains the toilet that makes sense because it's not usually a 
consistent thing that I'm noticing. It's like, oh, why is that doing that? But that makes sense. So it's just, it's just a weird cycle of the flush that, that caused that. Uh, if it continues to happen, though, is that a could that be a bigger sign that like, hey, there's something further down the line that you want to get checked out or do you, do you not worry about it? I mean, that could be a sign depending on where that toilet's located. If that's in the basement, that could totally be a sign that there's something bigger um, going on. But commonly it's it's us- it's something that's been flushed down that didn't allow the water to push and pull. So it didn't get the things up over the trapway. There's something still there, not allowing it to flush all the way. So like Dwayne said, it's almost like a wick. It's Mm -hmm. just drawing the water out, not letting it fill up properly. That makes sense. So we touched a little earlier on water conservation. Um, You talked about low flow toilets and different things like that. Uh, You also mentioned displacing the water by putting, you know, bricks or something in the tank. If someone doesn't have a low flow toilet, um, is that a good option? Or are you, were you saying that that can cause the toilet not to work properly because it was not engineered to use less water? Yeah, that's, yeah, they're, they're engineered to be the way they are. And I mean, yes, you're using less water, but the engineering needs that older three gallon flush or whatever it needed that to make that flush. And when you put a bunch of bricks in there, maybe we're down to two gallons now, but it just doesn't, they're just designed to have that much water as well as moving it through the toilet and on down the line and things. Um, and that can be a real issue. I, I worry sometimes about the low, low, low flow toilets and how low can we go? How low can we go Um, with our flow rates in where the water might flow faster than the than the pile and leave the pile behind? It's not load now. I I got you. It's a pile of load. Um, Okay, so you talked about how low can we go with the flow? You know, Uh, whoa, whoa! (laughs) You did it. I've seen, and I think a lot of people probably have in, uh, or maybe just the guys like in, in restrooms, you see the urinals that have no water, you know, it doesn't flush. It's a waterless toilet. How does that thing even work? They don't, I, I, no, 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 they 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 do, do. they do, (laughs) they do, do. there, there are some issues with those. They have a chemical that you pour down in there. That's, that's lighter than water. So it floats. And creates a seal in there and then as as you go to the bathroom go to the bathroom there we go um so it has a reservoir with some type of um chemical on top that keeps the smell from coming back up and i'm assuming there's an overflow so that when it gets to a certain level that just leaches out or right. not leaches but pours out pours is that out. how that yeah. works yeah it's basically a trap the same kind of thing as it as it fills then it goes the under the stuff on the bottom goes out the trap. Gotcha. And that seal keeps it smelling fresh and nice. Um, there is a chemical and they smell good and things, but a lot of times they they aren't maintained properly and things like that. And they don't have the pro, you know they get a lot of use and they're not maintained and so they get kind of ugly and nasty at times on those. Gotcha. I but I they always, are waterless. Yeah, I've and they don't like periodically come and like flush them or wash them like they just because they i mean the chemical isn't working on the ones that i've smelled and they smell bad (laughs) i had to go to a mall and pull out 12 of them really because they weren't maintained well and it took me two days to go through all the systems get them all cleaned out and put them back uh, and reinstall them i've never seen them in a residential application do you guys see those there urinals on on occasion urinals. no the waterless the ones i haven't ever seen the waterless one no no not on no. a residential uh okay so we talked about talked about squatty potty earlier and that offended you Dwayne. i could tell uh i'm just <laughs> kidding <laughs> so uh but I, I actually had a section in my notes i wanted to talk about uh toilet accessories now a squatty potty isn't necessarily a toilet accessory i consider it because i like my squatty potty but uh i've also seen you so what do you what do you not like about squatty potties ricky uh just i don't know just uh, ricky stands at his desk he doesn't even sit down yeah there's, uh, there's some things you can't stand up to do i don't know i don't know <laughs> 
<laughs> Never mind. Okay. So move on. We are moving. We are moving on. Uh, another thing that uh, that I think some people have tried. Have you have you seen those commercials for uh, poopery? Yes. No. No. You well, don't know. You've never heard of this. I don't watch TV. Yeah, you take them to parties. It's, it's, uh, like Whoa. if you're going to use Wait. somebody else's restroom. You oh, oh okay, okay. I was like, I was like, you don't say this is a party. <laughs> uh, okay, so so what poopery is is you you know what potpourri is, right? Yes. It's a play on that. Uh, so it, essentially, what it is is they they put uh, they mix essential oils and water. You spray it into the bowl. And it creates the the layer, the film layer, like you were talking about, Dwayne, with the uh, with the flushless or the waterless urinals. And you uh, you do whatever you've got to do, and it creates a barrier there, so that you don't have the odors uh, in filling the bathroom as much. And anyway, I just didn't know. I also have poopery. <laughs> of course you do. Of course I do. Squatty potties Howdy. and poopery. Anyway, and I will say this: it works pretty good. Hmm. Anyway, so but you were going into some of the accessories. So, you know, a lot of people call it the throne and yes. we spent a lot of time. Honestly, we uh, we spent a lot of time on our toilets and there's a lot of some of Ricky's. <laughs> I'm in and out, bro. Hey, in the, in the, <laughs> Ricky's a, Ricky's in a fast, the, uh, in the Facebook, fast goer. In the Facebook age and everything else, we spend a lot of time on the toilet. All right. So <laughs> you guys might. We might as well make it comfortable and things. But there's a lot of different things. You were talking about some of the accessories. There's, I mean, there are toilet seats that you can plug in, and they heat the water. They play music. They what put little fans? Wait, wait. Pull a musical the toilet out. seat. They have a wand that comes out, and this is with our toilet paper issue we're having. Everybody's talking about bidets, and we're hearing the word bidet in the yes, that's all over talking. the place. I have that and, as a and, note, and nobody knows about those. But they've got toilet seats that have a little wand that can come out with a remote control. And you can have that little bidet with warm water. So I knew about all of that, the heated seat and the heated water and the bidet feature. I have never seen a toilet seat or heard of one that it plays, plays music. music. Is it like a Bluetooth toilet seat? Are you telling me that these exist or are you just making this up? It's, Cause like, it's like Peloton. It encourages you as you go. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, man. That is too much. Uh, I hope that doesn't exist. But Peloton is not a sponsor of the show. But if you're watching <laughs> wow. and this develops, get at me, bro. Um, okay, so it was an episode about toilets. You had to know that we were going to like talk about things that were going to be funny. Uh, anyway, okay, so let's, let's actually seriously talk about uh, bidets. Because right now, I, I mean, we're recording this in the midst of, you know, the coronavirus uh you know thing that's going on and and the stores are running out of stock of toilet paper because people are going in and like freaking out a little bit and 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 buying up what they can and the shelves are empty and there are people out there that are worried about not having uh you know toilet paper but a bidet there's there's different kinds uh that are out there so there's the bidet itself is actually a separate unit but there are toilet seats that mimic what a bidet does, right? And so those are the things that I think people are most interested in because no one's going to plumb in a bidet when you're not already plumbed for, for all of that stuff. So um, let's talk about the bidets for a moment. What are the options that are available? So I know that there are, there are some that require power and there are some that don't require power. Um, there, there are very inexpensive bidet toilet seats um, it's actually not a toilet seat itself. It's a bidet attachment that you can, you take off your toilet seat, you install the bidet attachment, put your toilet seat back on top of it. And all it does is it has an adapter that hooks in to the bottom of the fill valve. And there's a little hose that diverts and goes to the control for the bidet. And that's how you get the bidet to work. Now it's cold water, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but it gets five degree cold water, in but the it gets the job done. Utah. But, uh, you know, and honestly, like the other option with the fancier ones that are more expensive, that, that require power, heated seat, heated water. We have not confirmed whether they play music. The ones that I have seen do not. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so so those are options as well. Um, but I don't know. Are you guys seeing more of those out there? I know that Amazon is sold out. I did a how to video yesterday on how to install one of those powerless uh bidets i funny story 
back in November, no kidding. I was scrolling through, I think it was Instagram or whatever, and saw a, uh, an ad for a bidet. Now the first time, not a bidet bidet, but one of these bidet seats. First time I ever used a bidet was actually at someone's toy, uh, plumbing, um, shop. We were visiting a company out of state and they had one and I'd never used one before. And I was, I was a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was freaked out a little bit, but after, after I used it, I was like, wow, this isn't that bad. The, you know, the cleanliness and like not having to use as much toilet paper or whatever. Um, so anyway, I was, I was then scrolling through Instagram and I saw this wasn't super expensive. These ones that don't require power. Um, and I was like, I was like, man, I think I'll get me one of those. So I actually have, I have two bathrooms at my house. So I ordered two and they got me with the, I was in the checkout and they were like, but if you buy a third one, we'll give it to you at a better price. So I got the third one. I don't even have three toilets anyway, but I thought, Hey, it'd come in handy. Bought them back in November, never installed them. I do this. I buy things and then they sit in the garage. I don't actually do anything with them. I can't be the only one anyway. But so I get the bidets and then this, this outbreak thing happens and there's no toilet paper. I'm like, huh, I, I'm ready. I'm going to install these bidets. And so I installed them and I, I did the third one uh, here at the office so I could make a, a video uh, of it or whatever. But anyway, I, they, they work, they work just fine. If you're out there listening and you are interested in a bidet, go to our YouTube channel, Facebook, whatever, there will be a video showing you how to install it. But anyway, I thought it worked great. But if you're, if you're not comfortable doing that, plumbers can absolutely, you know, take care of those things for you. But any other, uh, any, before we well, move on, just from, on, on those two, I mean, the ones that need the power, yep. um, typically we don't have a plug behind the toilet. Correct. You know, it's just not necessarily done. So it, is something that if you're remodeling and thinking about it, put a plug nearby. That's you know, a good and, point. And, and then, then you've got it there, but there could be some cost to getting a plug. Yeah. And if you, if you do want one of the ones that are, you know, more expensive that had the, have the heated feature, more than likely you're going to have to get an electrician involved because, uh, in the bathroom, you've got GFI outlets that are close by. They'll just have to run wires in the walls and things like that. But Dwayne brings up a good point. Go ahead. Oh, um, I did a quick Google because you were kind of calling me out on the uh, thing. <laughs> Look, now, I love CNN.com. Okay, 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 CNN. CNN this is national news. I got, I got you. All right. How Japan's music playing, water spraying, total toilets took over the, and then probably the world. Wow. They haven't taken over the world yet because I don't have one. It's a paradigm shift, of course. I mean, anything new. But, but if Can you imagine if it had really good bass? Right. Oh my. It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. But if you're if you're worried about, you know, toilet paper and things like that with with with, with the things that are going on, it is something that would be really hard mentally to get in, to get over because we're so used to our culture of using it. But once you once you use it, it's it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. Like you just it's, made it's a, terrifying. You just made <laughs> a really quick pivot from music on the toilet seat, I and know. then you were like, "Well, it is a it is a change." You're talking about bidets now. I'm talking about the bidet in general. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is a paradigm change, and so. yeah, for sure, it's not as it's not as uh, it's not as weird as it as it sounds. And it's once you go bidet, you won't go away. Oh my. For a day, you guys. For a day, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, yeah. I'm I, I'm done. I do actually. I do have a my last question before we end the show. And this, I have always wondered. This, I've just never asked anybody. The toilet seat covers that are in public bathrooms, they are shaped like a toilet seat. They've got that thing in the middle that you pull out to make sure that it goes around the rim. What are you supposed to do with that part in the middle? Is it supposed to hang over the outside of the bowl? Is it supposed to hang on the inside of the bowl? Are you supposed to tear it out completely? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you just, when you put it on, you just push down, it falls to the back of the toilet. The round part is in the front and the little sleeve is in the back and it just falls in. And then you, when Wait you're done, a second. that's what pulls it down is the tab. When it rotates the water, the Venturi effect, hang, pulls hang it down. I think I may have yes. been using these backwards my entire life. You're saying that right? you, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So you're I saying so that, too. that, that flap that you're supposed to do that goes in the back. It, 
it's connected in the front and when you push it falls down and it's connected well first off in my defense yeah you pull them out of the wall they're not labeled front or back i'm whoa wow i just that's pretty pretty common sense michael look (laughs) just because you stand up to go to the bathroom (laughs) and i don't know how to use those things wow i i just learned something folks i hope do me a favor. This leave a great me a comment. Episode. Leave me a comment. Do me, help me feel better that I am not the only one that did not know. How, I was always confused. That makes a whole lot of sense that it goes in the wow. When the water goes around, it pulls it down. Wow. Because it is perforated on part and attached to part. I, I totally, totally agree. To yeah. But I've always been confused because I'm sitting there looking at it. But, and here's why it's always kind of gotten me is because it's. If you look at the toilet seat, it especially in a commercial uh, building, it kind of goes around. And sometimes there's a little opening there, you know, that little seat. I don't know if that's just men's or women's as well, but like there's that little oh, sure. opening. And I, in my head, for whatever reason, I envision this little toilet seat cover. It goes around and then there's this part that's not perforated. It doesn't connect all the way. And I thought like, oh, well, maybe that's where that part goes. And then I didn't know if it was supposed to lay over the front of the toilet to like protect your your pants from whatever's on the front of that public restroom bowl or if it was i just didn't know i am gonna try it your way next time ricky yeah wow we didn't we didn't talk much about what to put down toilets i don't know if we want to do that for another episode yeah let's talk let's let's save that for another show uh you know just well you brought it up okay let's talk about what are the things and i said that we would i i thought we talked a little bit about it earlier but we didn't Let's talk about what you should and you should not flush and why. All right. So there are a lot of things. Flushable wipes should not be flushed. Okay. Down the toilet. They should go in the trash can. They call them flushable wipes, but they cause havoc on the system in your own home, in your own system, and on down the line. Clear there's, to the sewer there's no way that someone would use a flushable wipe and then put it in the garbage can. Like, why do, they, why do they tell us that they're flushable wipes when they're not flushable? Don't know. To sell them? Wow, okay. That was <laughs> versus, Mike, versus, versus a sponge. I'm in marketing. I should have known I the answer know. to that one. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, it just seems like it doesn't make any sense yeah, to me because so, I hear that all the time. Yeah, so baby wipes, any of those things shouldn't shouldn't be i mean do they go down the toilet yes but they shouldn't be i've got a son that works in as a sanitation plant uh, for a large city and and uh, i asked him prior to this and he said that it was anyway it was uh he says they get all kinds of things that cause havoc down the line so okay so um and i think we will probably talk about this more in depth on on another episode just because i know i want to be respectful of you guys times i know you guys got to go um but um, but that that's it for the show today. Thanks so much for listening to the episode of uh, this of in the house. Uh, we release new episodes every Tuesday. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Do me a favor. If you have time, go to iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast and, and review the show for me. Uh, I'd like to thank my guests, Ricky, Dwayne, Scott for being here and all the people behind the scenes uh, that help make this happen. If you'd like to know more about any hour services, please visit any I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to in the house. See ya.